so the Eldar Corsair kill team is out. Let's take a look at the new 40k models and the full leaks 40k datasheets from the Playtester Codex. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're back for yet another set of new Eldari miniatures. We've got the flexible Corsair kill team unveiled in full, a full look at a whole bunch of fun new models, and what's more we have really quite a lot of details as to how they're going to function in the Eldar Codex. Taking a look at two different datasheets that both represent this kit, we'll start by taking a look through the new models, and then we'll move on to the leaked rules. So first up, these new models are going to be coming in that Kill Team Nackmund box, the one where they're going to be facing off against Chaos models of some description. We haven't found out the other half of the kit yet. By this point, we've had really quite a few of these new Kill Team releases. The box has enough weapons to arm the squad with generic loadouts, but also an absolute ton of interesting specialist options, representing models with unique rules in Kill Team, but generally have some minor upgrades that they can use in 40k as well. I strongly suspect that these models are going to follow a very similar pattern to the previous Kill Team releases. Previous sets have been packaged alongside really quite a lot of cool terrain, but tended to be quite expensive as a result, and include a fair bit of Kill Team paraphernalia. Then, several months down the line, the kits have been released individually, so it could be really quite a long time before these guys actually get put on sale from Games Workshop. In any case though, it really does look like they're getting another very nice new Kill Team kit, Eldar Corsairs are the pirates and raiders that aren't really directly affiliated with either the Craft Worlds or with Drukhari, and I think they're a very cool choice indeed to represent in a kill team kit. Lots of people do love their Forge World range, but I'm not sure that they're sort of army that Games Workshop has enough willpower to make into a full faction, not when there's still a whole load of Craft World kits that still need releasing despite this massive release, but one that they could do a lot of justice to just in a single kit. As mentioned, the kit comes in 10 models, here are 6 of them, and there's really quite a lot of fun miniatures in here. I quite like the sort of mixed aesthetic of them, their armour kind of seems halfway between Craft Worlds and Drakari, though some of the helms and weapons really suggest one way much rather than the other. The chap on the right here does appear to have a Drakari helm, whereas the one on the left looks a lot more like an Eldar Seer. In general, a lot of the models are caped or have loincloths. There's really quite a lot of fun individualistic detail for every single one of them, lots of ammo pouches and trinkets and a fair few jazzy piratical hairdos and rebreather masks going on. For weapons and options here, going from left to right we appear to have a Psyker, apparently known as a Wayseeker, then I believe that's a Drakari Blaster, an Eldar Shuriken Cannon Heavy Weapon Bearer, a Combat Specialist with Hecatari Blades, apparently known as a Shade Runner, quite a cool shadowy helm going on on that guy. The next one appears to be the leader of the Corsairs, apparently he's going to be known as a Felark, He's got a bit of a classic looking back banner, and I believe that pistol is a Neuro Disruptor. And then the guy on the right, who appears to have been perhaps a Kabbalite warrior in a previous life, is carrying a Drakari Shredder. Next up we have a model with a whole bunch of spirit stones, apparently this one is a Soul Weaver. Perhaps she's protecting the spirits of the dead Corsairs maybe. Then we've got this very piratical guy with an eye patch and a Fulchu. Apparently that's some sort of Eldar bird of prey, but I'm sure a lot of people will happily just see it as a murder parrot. That guy appears to have an Eldari power sword as well. Then we've got a guy who appears to be a ranger in a long cloak. And finally, a Corsair going for maximal style points, dual wielding pistols, one of them a fearsome fusion pistol. Really quite a ton of core options here, particularly as I'm sure most of those will be able to just be swapped out for some basic loadout, apparently either shuriken rifles or Eldari power swords, as we'll see in a second. Here's just a few different shots of the miniatures, but I believe that you can see one of the alternate heavy weapon poses on the top left here. This guy's the guy who's bearing the Wraith Cannon, and it looks like you can either choose the Wraith Cannon or the Shuriken Cannon for the squad's heavy weapon. It's kind of interesting to see a Wraith Cannon not on a Wraith Guard. I guess these guys loot and trade what weapons they can with the other Eldar factions. Overall, I think it looks like a really fun kit. A bunch of fun character models to collect and play, whether you're playing 40k or Kill Team. Moving on though, let's talk about how they might function in the new Eldar Codex. As we've seen in multiple previous videos, Codex Eldari is one of the leakiest of them all, with the vast majority of the playtester codex being out on the internet now. It seems that this Corsair Warband might not be getting just one datasheet, but perhaps two within the Eldar Codex. Apparently Void Reavers, which could be a troop's choice, and Void Scarred, which can be an elite's choice. Obviously things might change somewhat between this and the actual codex full release, but as with the other datasheets, I'd expect only superficial changes, and most of this still to remain intact. It's kind of interesting that they can operate as two different datasheets, it means that you could really field quite a lot of Corsairs in an Eldari army if you wanted to. 
the Void Reaver's troops being the more standard issue ones, and the Void Scarlet Elites appears to be the more extended data sheet, with the option to take some of those specialist choices, things like Seers and Rangers and everything else. First up, let's start with the Void Reavers then, which, if Codex Eldari follows suit with the previous rules, apparently they're going to be a troops choice that can't fill mandatory detachment slots, unless your detachment is made of 100% Corsair units, which have the Anwraith keyword. Apparently that means Corsair in the Eldar language. If they're troops, I'm imagining that that might mean that they'd get obsec, and it does also mean that you could take as many units of them as he wanted, if he did want to have a very piratical themed Eldar army. The fact that it alludes to entire detachments of Amraith units does make it interesting whether or not there might be an HQ choice for them. It could just literally be Prince Iriel out of Iandin. Though I guess it's not impossible that they could get a Corsair HQ choice, much like the Sisters of Silence got a generic one out of the squad. Otherwise though, in more mixed craft world armies, it does mean that they're always going to be an extra rather than a mandatory detachment filler. That's definitely a big weakness compared with the troops that actually fill your required detachment slots. In any case, apparently the Void Reavers will be costing 10 points per model, and you get 5 to 10 models in the squad. Keywords wise, they have Anwraith, Aziyani, Drukari, and Infantry. Really interesting that they're both Aziyani and Drukari, it means that they could be taken in either army. So potentially they could be an interesting choice for Drukari armies as well. Though admittedly, Drukari do have plenty of units vying for the light infantry roles. Though I believe, keywords wise, they will be able to embark in things like Raiders or Venoms as transport so perhaps could be an interesting alternative to Cabalite Warriors if he did want more troops. In any case, they are also notably lacking keywords, they don't appear to be core, and they also don't have the Craftworld keyword either, meaning they wouldn't get any additional buffs from a Craftworld trait on top of what they already do. Statline-wise, they seem pretty much as you might expect, move 7 inches, hitting on 3s, strength and toughness 3, 1 wound and 2 attacks, leadership 7 and a 4 plus save, and apparently the Felarch leader gets a plus 1 attack and plus 1 leadership. Unlike the Exarchs, he doesn't appear to get 2 wounds. From there we're into war gear, and it looks like the squad has 2 default loadouts, either all of them take shuriken rifles, or all of them take power swords and shuriken pistols. I'm not sure if we've actually seen any shuriken rifles on the preview models, so that's kind of interesting. I do wonder just how many parts there'll be in the box to facilitate this, or whether they're relying on you breaking up the units or taking a hefty amount of special weapons. It sounds like at least on this troops unit, you've got to either t commit to all the power swords, or all the shuriken rifles, you can't mix or match. In any case, shuriken rifles just appear to be a pretty standard rapid fire shuriken weapon, 24 inch range, strength 4, AP minus 1, damage 1, and the shuriken rule for an extra 2 AP on wound rolls of a 6. The power sword's pretty standard as well, plus 1 strength, AP minus 3, and damage 1. I feel like the overall theme of the unit does seem a bit more shooty than it does fighty. I suppose you could treat these guys as cop prize howling banshees if you wanted to, with a few power sword attacks coming out, but nowhere near as many benefits. The Felark leader has a couple of interesting options. For 5 points he can take a Neuro Disruptor, a 12 inch one shot pistol weapon at strength 6, AP minus 3 and damage 1. If it wounds a non-vehicle target, they take a single mortal wound and the attack sequence ends. I suppose that's not a terrible upgrade over a shuriken pistol. He also has the option to take a Mist Shield for a 4 plus Imbol save. I'm not sure if I could see anything represented on the model for that. I guess it could add a little bit of extra durability to the squad if you wanted to tank hits on the leader. But I'm personally not 100% sure that's worth it for 5 points. Might just be better off putting that towards more Corsairs. Next up we have the Special and Heavy Weapons. The Special Weapons are apparently 1 per 5 models. Plus 10 points for a Corsair Blaster, basically the same stat line as the Dukari one and plus 5 for the Corsair Shredder, again the same as Drakari. Both of those seem kind of fair enough at that price point, a decent increase to their firepower. Finally, if the squad numbers 10 models strong, then for 10 points you can take that Shuriken Cannon. It has the new profile at Heavy 3, 24 inch range, Strength 6, AP minus 1 and Damage 2. And for 15 points you can take the Wraith Cannon, 18 inches, Assault 1, Strength 10, AP minus 4, Damage D3 plus 3. I feel like you could combine the Wraith Cannon with a couple of Corsair Blasters for quite a serious amount of anti-tank coming out of the squad, an anti-tank that you could advance with and activate on the move as well. Unlike the rest of the Eldar, they don't appear to have Battle Focus or Strands of Fate on this datasheet though, I guess further distinguishing them from their Craftworld cousins. Instead of getting any of the unique bonuses for either Craftworlds or Drakari, they instead seem to get a rule called Reavers of the Void. This one's an interesting just flat damage buff to the squad. Hit rolls of 6, auto wound the enemy, 
and they also count as an unmodified wound roll of 6 as well. That really doesn't seem too bad when you're likely going to be attacking with a flurry of low strength attacks, and the counting as a wound roll of 6 thing is really powerful in combination with those shuriken weapons. That means that all of those hit rolls of 6 are going to be getting AP-3 on shuriken weapons, or an extra mortal wound with that wraith cannon. Despite this, I'm still not entirely convinced that they're going to be spectacular damage dealers in themselves. 10 points per model is really quite a lot comparing them to other Eldar Craft World and Drakari units. In any case, looks like a fun data sheet. It'll be interesting to see what other combos they have when the Codex comes out. Finally, we get to the other option for fielding Corsairs, the Corsair Void Scarred Elite's Choice. And again, they come with that rider that they can't fill any mandatory Elite slot choices, such as in a Vanguard detachment, at least not unless the entire detachment is Corsairs. Again, they're 5 to 10 models, and they're 12 points each rather than 10. You can also take 0 to 1 of each one of the specialist choices as well, though you can only have a maximum of 10 models in the squad. They've basically got the same keywords, still no core or craft worlds, and compared with their standard cousins, the only real benefit that they get is an extra attack each, meaning that each standard one is going to be 3, and the fell arc would be 4. Definitely seems like these could be a lot more viable to run with the power swords, after all you are paying for an extra attack, so I guess it kind of makes sense to use it. It seems that the Elite's Choice datasheet really is an expanded one, they basically get every single weapon option, and they also get more flexible datasheet loadouts as well, basically any Corsair Shuriken Pistol and Eldari Power Sword can be replaced by one Shuriken Rifle, so it means that you could mix and match between the two loadouts if you wanted to. Probably not tactically optimal, though it could be fun if you want to mix and match some fun models. As well as this, they get three extra options as well, which do kind of remind me of the Orc Commando upgrades, fun little options, but locked to bigger squads, and not exactly too efficient for the price point that they charge for. First up for 5 points, one of them can take a Ranger Long Rifle, so a tiny bit of sniping within the units, but unfortunately that's just really not an efficient choice, 17 points for one sniper rifle is quite underwhelming. I guess kind of fun if you want to use it though, and if you do roll a 6 to hit, you'll get a 6 to wound as well, so that could punch through a mortal wound a little bit more of the time. For 10 points, one of the models can take a fusion pistol instead of their power sword. Kind of a shame to give up the decent melee, though you do get a very cool model dual wielding pistols. And finally, and perhaps one of the most interesting, is that one model can take that nice Falshu bird, whose BDIs apparently allow the bearer's unit to ignore the benefits of light cover for enemies. I'm not entirely sure how the bird manages to do this, I like to think he's calling out targeting data to the rest of the squad, but I guess on 10 points on a big unit that could be usable even if it's not going to be relevant against every single unit. Finally, we get to these three specialist options. First up is the Shade Runner for 18 points, a 6 point upgrade over the standard Void Scarred. He gets a fairly impressive 4 attacks that hit on 2s, but he does only strike at strength 3 rather than strength 4 that he would be with the Power Swords, so it is going to kind of depend on his target as to whether or not he's a direct upgrade or not. As well as that though, he makes an extra little attack when the unit charges in. He gets to roll a d6, and on a 2 to 5, the enemy takes one mortal wound. On a 6, they take d3. For 6 points over a standard one, he doesn't really seem like a bad upgrade if you are taking the power swords for the unit. Next up is a 5 point upgrade, or 17 points for the Soul Weaver. They're equipped with an Eldari power sword and plasma grenades, and their soul stones make the unit a bit tougher somehow. Basically, the first failed save for the unit each turn basically gets ignored because its damage characteristic becomes 0. Again, if you are taking a unit with the power swords, for an extra 5 points, that seems very reasonable. It pretty much guarantees you saving at least one Corsair's life. Finally, for 25 points, so 30 points above a standard one, is the Wayseeker. This guy's the mini Psyker character that we saw earlier, and he brings a little bit of psychic muscle to the unit, knowing one power from either the Fate or the Fortune disciplines, and has a special rule that prevents him from suffering perils of the warp. Of course, they're not going to be casting anywhere near as much as a Farseer, and don't get the same sort of benefits as them. But basically to be able to include a mini Farseer within the unit just for 25 points seems like it's a pretty much auto-include to me. I guess in theory that could be 75 points for a Void Scarred unit with Power Swords, and one unit being a Wayseeker with his Witch's Staff that wounds on 2s and his damage D3, a little bit of anti-infantry muscle, and also some more decent support powers to better help the rest of the Eldar army. Again, much like the Void Reavers, the Void Scarred also get that nice special rule for hits of 6 to auto wound and count their wound roll as a 6, and I think with 3 attacks per model, that is making their power swords look a lot more threatening. To be honest, out of the two units, I'm a lot more interested by this Void Scarred one than the Void Reavers. I suspect it might well not work out being a more credible melee threat than big units of Striking Scorpions or Howling Banshees, 
but it seems like it could just be really good fun to use 10 of these with power swords, swap three of them out for the three different specialists, and have a unit that puts out a massive flurry of power sword attacks, while also being able to cast a powerful spell. So anyway, I think that this release seems like a real win to me. A whole bunch of fun new models, and really quite an interesting new datasheet as well. Not certain it's going to be one of the top tier competitive ones, but either way it looks like really good fun to use. I would bear in mind that there's certainly still potential for this to change before the final draft of the Eldar Codex, but I'm certainly looking forward to reviewing the book in full. I'll be posting a review on the channel just as soon as it's out, and I get one done. If you'd like to see any more Eldar rumours or leaks that come out before then, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll certainly cover as much of the Eldar news as possible. It's really quite a busy time for them with all these leaks out. I already have another couple of videos in the pipeline. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description. Making all this content does take a fair amount of time and effort, and if you are enjoying regularly, then any support is enormously appreciated. It really is what keeps the videos coming. I do try and give channel backers a few decent rewards, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.